Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you guys uh, what I got from the MAC Lunar Illusions collection for uh, the Lunar New Year uh, 2020. Um, I got the eyeshadow palette, the blush, and the highlighter. And I thought I'd give them a try, um, show them to you guys, tell you what I think. So let's get into the pieces of this collection that I got. First I want to talk about um, the packaging. Even the box packaging of this, this is the eyeshadow palette. Even the outside box for this is really pretty. It has um, this beautiful print all the way around. And then the eyeshadow palette. It's actually smaller than I thought it would be, but that, that may be that um, I have one other MAC eyeshadow palette, one of the maybe 15 pan neutral palettes. That's it. That's the only Mac that I have. Um, so I thought I would, I, I thought it'd be a little bigger. Anyway, it is nine shot, nine shades and it's a total of, um, 5.85 grams. So this is what the palette looks like. The eyeshadow palette is called now and Zen. It's got the new year medallion in the center. And then it says Mac, this portion is clear, so you can see the shadows. It is 5.85 grams and retails for $33. I'm gonna open them up and show them to you. Of course, they look used because I've already done this eye look. <laughs> this is what the shadows look like on the inside. My understanding is that none of these are new shades. You may have all of these shades already in your collection if you do to get this, or if you got this, it would probably have just been for the packaging. The shades are Ploof, which is frosted off-white. It's a frost shadow. Honey Lust, which is a luster. It's a bronze dipped peach. Tilt, which is a frost. It's violet with blue-green pearl. Soft Brown, which is a matte. It's a soft golden peachy brown. Expensive Pink, which is a pink duochrome. Omega, which is a soft muted beige taupe and it's a matte shade. Girly, which is a satin. It's a rosy pink with subtle shimmer. Cranberry, which is a frost. It's a red plum with pink shimmer. And Black Tide, which is a velvet and it's black with silver sparkle. This is what the packaging looks like for the blush. It's just absolutely beautiful. And then these are what the edges look like. It is a powder blush split pan in the shade Dyna Dynastic Fantastic, which is a combination of the shades the blush is 10 grams of product and retails for $31. Pinch of Peach and Modern Mandarin. I had no idea how much I would really like this packaging. So that's what the actual compact looks like. I'm going to turn it. Hopefully you will be able to tell that that center portion is actually raised. The whole thing, all of this, all of it is slightly raised. Let's see if I can make the camera focus on that. I feel like you can tell that the, the center is raised, but all of this is raised also. It's just absolutely stunning, this packaging. When I first got it, I thought, man, I wish I had gotten two of these. One to um, not use and then I realized there's nothing special about the actual pan of blush. This is what it looks like on the inside. Nothing special. So it does have a mirror. So once, um, if I were to ever use the blush up, I'd still have the uh, beautiful compact to keep. And the last thing I got was the MAC Lunar Illusions uh, Skin Finish in Double Gleam. This is what the outside of the packaging looks like. 
just gorgeous. Here's the sides. This, this is a highlighter that um, is already part of um, Max collection. It's not new. None of these shades, I don't think any of them, any of the lips, um, the blushes, uh, shadows, or this are new at all. So you may have all of these in your collection, just not in this packaging. The highlighter is nine grams and retails for $33. This is what the outside of the compact looks like. It's a pink plastic. All of the packaging is plastic. It is clear in the lid. It's clear so you can get a slight hint of what's underneath. Oh, I hope this comes across. This thing is gorgeous. The detail on this highlighter is amazing. If I hadn't been able to get two of these from Selfridges, I would not touch this highlighter. There's no way I would run a brush across this pan if I didn't have one to save. So if you did get your hands on this, just buy the Double Gleam in the regular pan and don't touch this would be my advice. This thing is just absolutely stunning. Before I started shooting this video, I did uh, go to a few different websites to see um, where the collection was still available. MAC does have everything still available except for the highlighter. Macy's has everything except for the highlighter. Selfridges has everything except for the highlighter. And it's actually available at Ulta online and they have everything except for the highlighter. Um, today is Saturday, January 11th. My understanding with MAC I've never bought much MAC at all. I told you I have one eyeshadow palette. Um, is that they just restock stuff. Uh, no real warning, no heads up, no rhyme or reason. It just shows back up on their website. So if you really want this collection and you were not able to get your hands on the highlighter, just keep checking their website. Keep checking Ulta. Ulta does have the option to select email me when, when back in stock. So I hope that if you really want this, you're able to get your hands on it. If you're enjoying this video so far, please consider subscribing. For those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much and welcome back. If you want to see how I got this look using the eyeshadow palette, the blush and the highlighter, then please keep watching. All right, so I have a little bit of Huda Beauty pound cake under my eyes to catch any potential fallout. And I have, as always, Anastasia Beverly Hills um, eyeshadow primer on my eyelids. Wayne Goss number 18 and the shade Soft Brown. Just pat, 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 pat as right into this outer corner. And I'm going to blend this up all the way to the tip of my brow and over, under. My eyebrow. I feel like the shade's very true to pan and it's blending well. I'm not sure if I have this shade in the only other MAC palette I have. I know none of these shades are new. So it's a possibility that I have this one already. Seems to be a little bit of kick up in the pan, but not a lot, but there is some.
same brush and the shade Expensive Pink. I'm going to pat this shade over in the outside corner also. I'm not sure why I started on this side this time. <laughs> Funny. I'm going to bring it a little bit more towards the middle of the eye than I did the last shade, but also dragging it up into the crease and just above my brow bone, but not as high as the first shade. shade is supposed to be a duochrome so hopefully I'll notice a shift at some point in this application process. Scott Barnes number 63 and the shade Cranberry. I'm gonna use this brush to put the shade in the outer corner and kind of wing it up to the crease and drag it over. Just opening my eye and looking into the mirror to make sure I have the shade as high as I want it right in here. Still, sometimes can't believe how long I had this brush and just didn't use it. Because I couldn't, I don't want to say I couldn't get the hang of it. I just hadn't really played with it enough to see what it could do. I had used it like to drag out a shadow a wing or to do a wing coming out from my lower lash line, but I hadn't really explored just what it could do. I can't believe I wasted so many, probably months of having this brush and not using it because it's definitely at this point one of my very favorite eyeshadow brushes. Refer number two and the shade Tilt. I like, um, we're just going to take turns on which eye I start with apparently. I'm just going to use this brush as a flat brush and pack this shadow all over the lid with the exception of that very inside corner. I haven't really said this, but so far all of these shadows are performing very well. Um, I don't have anything to compare them to as far as how they compare to um, the other versions of the same shadow in different forms in MAC. I don't even know if these shadows came in palettes or um, as singles. I really have never been that much of a MAC girl. Having never, I feel like a lot, I was gonna say most, but that's probably not fair. A lot of YouTube 
makeup people. Um, worked at MAC at some point. And since I've never in any way worked in the makeup industry and I'm not a makeup artist, I never really had much MAC. I think MAC like got really big at the time maybe that I had two or three children and just wasn't like in young, young children. I just wasn't um, buying, or I shouldn't say buying, I wasn't as into makeup at that point because I was very busy with s small children. And then I went back to school and still wasn't really into Sort of more pricey makeup. I don't. I don't consider Mac expensive makeup, but I'm sure when I was in school, I wasn't buying uh, even makeup as expensive as Mac. The um, so I'm not. I just don't really know about these shadows outside of this palette. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna take my Wayne Goss 07 and go back in with that shade Expensive Pink and fill in this inner corner. Just patting this on with this flat brush and kind of edging the crease. Morphe 124 in the shade Honey Lust. Take this shade, just pat it just in this inside corner. I'm sitting here, part of me is really wondering how that shade tilt would look um, wet. I may just try it on my hand because I am trying to keep this a little more of a soft look today. I'm going to take that same shade and the same brush and just go right here under my brow. did get, I can see a little bit of fallout from that shade tilt. Can you see it right in here on both eyes? Okay, I wet that uh, Morphe 124 brush and picked up some of that tilt and we're going to see how it looks wet. Well, that's very, very shiny <laughs> yeah that's very shiny okay I'm gonna do it <laughs> yeah I'm gonna put this shade on wet I don't think I'm gonna go all the way across the lid with it wet I think I'm gonna keep it right here in the center as a wet shadow That's very shiny. I did wet the brush a little bit more just because the, when I wet it the first time I wasn't anticipating it needing to be wet enough to actually apply any shadow. I was just going to do that swatch.
but like right every time I I'm not very careful about laying the brush down and picking it straight back up if I pull at all it's actually disrupting the shadow and um, removing it so that's something to be careful of if you use this wet just dab straight down and pick back up or you're going to disrupt your shadow. I am going to go back in in just a minute with that same shade tilt on a dry brush and to just blend the edges of where it's wet but I need to let the pan dry from the wet brush so I'm going to sweep this bake off and work on my lower lash line. I'm going to go in with a refer 16 brush and pick up this shade girly I chose this brush because I really want to diffuse this shade quite a bit under my eye. Really want to blend it down quite a bit. Am I trying to make myself look ill? I don't think so. Hopefully not. Esom 31 and the shade Cranberry. I'm gonna keep this shade closer to the lash line. Go about three quarters of the way across my eye blending up onto the upper eyelid. I am letting the shadow drag a little bit onto my waterline. Same brush and that shade Expensive Pink. Just bringing it from the inner corner out to where that cranberry shade is and overlapping them just slightly to blend them together. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that tilt shade with the Wayne Goss 07 since it's dry now and just pat right at the edges before the shade is wet just to blend that out. If you're careful enough when you use a shadow wet to just stay in one little small part of the pan, then you don't usually have to wait for it to dry. I just, when I first went in to grab some of the shadow wet, I really was just planning on swatching it. Orphe 124 and the shade, poof. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say that. I'm gonna use this to highlight right under the brow. Okay, I'm gonna get uh, this bake off my face and finish up my eyes and then we'll be, I'll come back and we'll do the blush. Okay, so I have my liner and lashes on and now we're gonna start on this blush. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to take my Sonia G Classic Cheek from the Sky Line Collection and pick up both of these shades. I'm just going to kind of dab around in the Pink Punch in the Mandarin. Mandarin, I've already forgotten. Modern Mandarin. 
I'm just going to start by patting this right up high on my jawline. Jawline. Cheekbone. Goodness. I've said this before in other videos. If you're someone like me that tends to get a little out of hand with your blush, um, if you'll just pat it on at first before you start blending, get most of the color off of your brush in that patting motion, you won't inadvertently drag your blush too far this way or this way. If you're cognizant of why you're patting. For me, it's almost like a reminder. Of, Stay gentle. Stay gentle. It's a very pretty blush. Is it my favorite blush? No. Once again, not my favorite blush formula, but it's pretty. Okay, so now we're gonna go in on this highlighter. Um, I did buy two of these, so I could have one that I never touched, um, because I do not have Double Gleam, which is what this shade is. If you already own Double Gleam, just buy this and put it away. It is so absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you can find it before this video is over, I'm going to look on my phone and see where, who has it available right now. But oh, it is so gorgeous. I'm going to go in with my uh, Jaclyn Hill Collection J03 brush. Uh, not a Morphe brush, one of her brushes from her most recent highlighter launch. Pick some of this up. I'm gonna. This is a like a condensed fan. Oh, the highlighter is actually very blingy. A condensed fan brush, but it's actually very capable of blending. Shadows a that shadow that highlighter is a little more blingy than I thought it would be. And I'm saying that because I don't own the highlighter already, not because I um, know anything specifically about MAC highlighters or had heard anything about this highlighter. It just looks kind of soft in the palette, but it actually goes on very highlighty. Get just the end of my nose, get right over my eyebrow and up. And now, right on the cupid's bow. I'm very pleasantly surprised by this highlighter. So, I'm going to finish up my face and I'll be right back to let you know my final thoughts on this collection. All right, so this is the final look. I finished off my eyes with um, Milk Boss liner in my upper waterline. I put on House of Lash Lashes in the Ethereal Light, and I put on Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, Ryland on my <laughs> lips. My thoughts on the eyeshadow palette. It performed fine, there was some fallout. It did not blow me away, but it is by no means a bad eyeshadow palette. If you love MAC, that's you'll love this palette. I thought the blushes went on very well, very, they blended smoothly. They were not highly pigmented, but certainly buildable. The highlighter actually surprised me. It was a little more, had a little more bling than I thought it would. I'm so happy to have the pieces of this collection I have. I think they're beautiful. The, the outside packaging to all the way to the inside is just stunning. If you didn't get this, um, any pieces of this collection, and you are somewhat a collector of makeup, I would encourage you to get what you can get your hands on. Uh, submit your email to Ulta to be notified when it restocks, when it restocks and keep your eye on Mac's website. I, that highlighter, I couldn't be happier to have. 
I did look online. Today is Saturday, January 11th. Um, I did not find the highlighter anywhere available online today, but um, MAC had everything but the highlighter. Ulta had everything but the highlighter available online. Macy's had everything but the highlighter and Selfridges had everything but the highlighter. So hopefully if you wanted that highlighter, you got it. And, but you know MAC, they, they just restock stuff. Just all of a sudden it's back on their site. Um, so just keep checking their website. Maybe they'll restock this, who knows. Um, but if you wanted these um, items, I really hope you got them. They are truly beautiful. The packaging is gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much if you watched it all the way through. If you are a return viewer, thank you so much. If you are a subscriber, I appreciate you so much. Um, if you're not a subscriber and you like the video, please consider subscribing. Um, ring the bell if you want to know when I post something else. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic 2020 so far. And I'll see you in my next video. Mwah.